because the government is, is no longer trying to seem benign about it. It's saying, listen, the petroleum resource is under your land. It's ours. It's the government's. Hello, David Ansari here. I am happy to be back in the country and behind the mic hosting the CRA YouTube channel again. I was off in northern Spain in the Basque country hiking the Camino Trail and very interesting and beautiful part of the world, but always good to be back in South Africa. But joining me to discuss a new piece of legislation, which is going to have some quite pernicious effects on the energy sector in South Africa is Martin van Staden. He is a legal fellow with Sarkelicha, the business advocacy group. So Martin, tell us about this new piece of legislation and what might its potential impact be? Thanks, David. Yeah, it's the uh, uh, Petroleum Resources Development Bill, uh, Upstream Petroleum Resources Development Bill that is now meant to apply over another piece of legislation that I think many of the, the uh, audience here would know quite well, the Mineral and Petroleum Resources Development Bill, which uh, effectively nationalized all mineral and petroleum resources back in 2004. So this is now an additional piece of legislation that can that's bureaucratizing this whole sector uh, on specifically the upstream petroleum resources. Uh, so that is uh, the exploration and production of petroleum. Um, uh, and it's it's bringing in a, a whole new raft of regulations, a whole new raft of government discretion for ministers, uh, for the Minister of Energy, uh, new racialism, uh, and, and of course, uh, a new tax, because uh, it, it wouldn't be South African legislation without that. So it's it's just a, a, a new detrimental piece of economic regulation, which we are at this stage so accustomed to in South Africa. And it would be good if, if they could rather shelve, shelve this legislation and, and and instead look towards deregulation, because I mean, uh, we're, we're all ca caught in the middle of an electricity crisis, but I think uh, many people would agree that petroleum is in fact the most important energy resource that uh, in the world. In fact, it is the land, it's what propels transportation of all economic goods over land, sea and air. And it also gets used in, in, in anything from plastic production to fertilizer to tarmac. Uh, solvents and even pharmaceuticals, which I learned recently. So it's so crucially important. And really, it should be the last thing that government is trying to overregulate at this stage in, in our economic downturn. Right. Well, Martin, let's talk about the financial implications that you highlighted there. There's this a carried interest provision, which you warn about in your press release, which we'll link to at the bottom of this video. Uh, tell us more about mm -hmm. that. Yeah, so of course, uh, it, it, it again wouldn't be South African legislation if the bill wasn't uh, badly drafted. So it's quite unclear what they mean by this. But what from what we can gather is that uh, a government is now claiming to get a 20% carried interest in every petroleum right. Uh, now, it could benefit from this according to its discretion, either in cash or in kind, which is the verbatim provision in the bill. Uh, so it's, it's clear, at least, that the government can come to you as a petroleum producer and say, we want 20% of what you're extracting from that petroleum uh, reserve uh, or draw there. We want that and we want it into our, um, uh, our strategic stock, uh, what the government calls its own petroleum uh, reserves. Or the government can say, we want 20% of the revenue or the profit that you get from, uh, from your sale of the petroleum that you produce. So it's, it's quite unclear precisely whether it's applied to revenue or to profit or whatever. The fact is, this is just another tax. Uh, we should remember that South Africa is one of the most highly taxed societies in the world. At least we were in 2019. I can't imagine that that's gotten be uh, much better. Um, uh, and all these companies pay corporate taxes. Everyone there pays income taxes, et cetera. And now this carry, so-called carried interest uh, institution is, is an additional tax that they would need to uh, comply with. Yeah, and of course, we need to be making it easier for foreign investors to come to South Africa. This is mm -hmm. adding more red tape and bureaucracy and barriers. All Absolutely. right, well, what about some of those uh, BE provisions that you flagged there, Martin? Mm. This seems to be part of what Sarkilich often refers to as the second phase of BE. Could you elaborate on that? Yes, so uh, broad-based black economic empowerment used to apparently be voluntary in South Africa. We, we have our concerns about whether that was ever truly the case, but uh, at least that was the pretense. Now, in recent years with institution, the bills like the Competition Amendment Bill, which is now an act, uh, uh, the Property Practitioners uh, Act, which is a bill which is now under consideration, the Conduct of Financial Inst Institutions Bill, and of course now 
the upstream petroleum resources development bill is a a, 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 a really um, a far more intensive uh, uh, application of BE on the economy, which really does away with any pretense of voluntariness. Uh, it is now simply going to be compulsory for uh, uh, companies to comply. And this bill is littered with that. So 10% of every uh, petroleum right must in some way benefit the uh, designated racial group. Uh, uh, and, uh, the, and the companies that operate in the sector, uh, in everything that they do, uh, one of the objectives of the bill is to increase the development and participation of Black persons. And uh, one of the registration requirements for someone who wants a petroleum right is that they must do this in everything effectively that they do. So this bill truly represents a significant racialization of the upstream petroleum uh, sector. And, and I mean, it's, it's, it's astounding that only a few, a while ago, a week or two ago, President Ramaphosa made a speech about uh, how in electricity generation, uh, there is uh, an, uh, a raft of red tape that keeps us from having uh, increased capacity. Yet on this side of the energy spectrum, uh, the president is presiding over a significant expansion in red tape and in bureaucratism. Uh, and, and, and it's quite astounding. Uh, one, one, one feels that the government might have uh, uh, two factions in it, one that is in intensely ideological and one that does have a sense of pragmatism, but it's not clear uh, uh, where they fall because we do know the minister of energy is in is apparently in the president's uh, faction so it's it's a it's a, a huge bout of legal uncertainty that's coming with uh, speeches like the president made and with a bill like this coming around the same time uh, it's it's simply not good the government really needs to get its house in order All right martin well you are a legal scholar and you've spent quite a lot of time looking at this idea of custodianship and nationalization of uh, land and other resources you mentioned the MPRDA that other piece of legislation do you think that this also represents a kind of a creeping uh, encroachment of the state into property rights more broadly yes absolutely uh, in in 2004 and before that uh, legal scholars warned that the MPRDA talking about custodianship was in fact just nationalization the government was coming in and ex effectively expropriating every uh, farm or what have you uh, uh, the mineral resources below that farm and the petroleum resources below that farm or property uh, and the government said no this is not expropriation this is not nationalization the government is simply becoming a trustee of some sort of this property but it's not becoming the owner it won't benefit from this resource it's using it for the benefit of the public. Now, this bill uh, basically rips that pretense away because in one provision, it, it talks about petroleum resources as the state's resources. It uses the term its resources, referring to the government. Uh, and that to be just uh, really stood out as the government dropping any pretense that custodianship uh, is something uh, benign and not nationalization. I think the government is now more than open about the fact that it did, in fact, expropriate and in many cases without compensation the mineral and petroleum resources of private uh, landowners uh, and and our conclusion from that is that if this bill is adopted in its current way then we need to go back and uh, all the expropriations that the government did without compensation it would need to now provide compensation so yes this is a, a an interesting escalation of anti-property rights policy in south africa because the government is, is no longer trying to seem benign about it it's saying listen the petroleum resources under your land, it's ours. It's the government. Martin van Saden, thank you very much. I'm keen to hear from you, our audience. What do you make of Gwede Mantash's plans to grab more power in the energy sector? Leave your thoughts down in the comment section below. Also, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. My name is David Ansara. This is the Center for Risk Analysis. Until next time, take care.